When my daughter was a week old, that's when I had to hand her over to social services. The lady came to get her, and as I was leaving, I seen her coming in with the car seat, and I just wanted to run behind her and say, oh, can I come with you? Okay. Hello, Kate. Okay. Oh, yeah, thank you, Kate. It makes my day a lot when I see my daughter. Hello. Hey. Rissy, Rissy. We can have a nice bath this morning. Society in general yeah. do not want to know or accept that children suffer. Um, that's very good. Every day in this office, in the offices across the country, thousands of good decisions are made that protect thousands of children from harm. But it's completely invisible to the general public. Last year, social workers took nearly 10,000 children into care in England alone. When the risk is immediate, there's no choice. But often, it is a more difficult judgment. I want my baby back as a baby, Louise. I didn't want her back when she's like two. But all the time, it's about risk assessing the household. Is this child at risk? If so, who from, what from? and are we able to put in a safety plan or do we need to remove the child? People don't realise we're actually trying to save children's lives in some cases. For the past year, social workers in Bristol have been filmed dealing with these complex issues. When is it right to remove children? And when is it safe to let them go home? It's a little bit unconventional, but come on. Sometimes I do feel like walking away because it is too much, it's just overwhelming. <laughs> Baby Mercedes is three months old. A court ordered her to be placed in temporary foster care due to her mother's lifestyle. Louise sees her baby three times a week at a contact centre. But she is determined to get her daughter back permanently. I was going to give you a little massage now. A little massage? Hello. The contact sessions are supervised to assess Louise and ensure the safety of her baby. It didn't worry me that people was in the room and that anymore. I'd just be myself, how I would be with her if she was at home. I just think some people deserve to have a chance at making a go of it before the decision is to have the child removed. Bye-bye. The lady that sits in with me, Kate, she's nice, she's very nice. Uh, well, obviously, there's a lot of people that want me to get my baby back, so... So I just get uh, upset all the time, really. I just want her back now. But yeah, I'll get there. Louise has a long history of drug abuse. She was six months pregnant when she met Wayne, who is currently on parole for drug-related offences. Drugs have already cost Louise one child. My eldest was about 10 months old. That's the first time I tried heroin. It wasn't long then till I um, had to ring and ask my mum if she could take my daughter. And I just thought, well, my daughter's safe there. Oi. 
right there, yeah? He looks tired as well. So we'll have some food, go in, just lie down and rest. I was in a mad headspace then, and that's when I started doing crack cocaine as well, as heroin, and then injecting and living here, there and everywhere. Every day, as soon as my eyes was open, I'd be smoking till, till I was literally dead on my feet. No, I'm saying, how are you feeling that you're out for your birthday and you're in a relationship? And I know we're going through things and stuff, but you're normally in prison, aren't you? <coughs> well, Heroin is a selfish, controlling drug. You're not thinking you're pregnant. You could even see the bell is there, but it, it, it's, it's alien to you. You're in that, that place, that horrible, dark place. You're thinking, oh, wow, there's a baby in there. But I'll still have another hit in half an hour. Louise claims to have stopped using heroin and crack, but she'll also have to quit prescription methadone and attend a detox programme if she's to have any chance of getting her daughter back. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> In the ideal world, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it, to have everything ordered and managed, but that's not life then, is it? My job is a job of chaos, because you work with people's lives. You never know what's going to happen. I never take anything for granted. I never assume things, you know, because all families are different because it's about survival and families need to survive. Bye then, see you tomorrow. It's just about ordering information, you know, and, and picking it. A bit like Poirot. <laughs> Hello. Mercedes is a new case for social worker Louise, just one of 20 children she's responsible for. This one is actually in care proceedings, so all throughout the pregnancy, the mum was using drugs right up until the birth, if I understand. Um, so we assess mum to see if she's um, able to provide care for this baby in a long-term way. I'll bring her again in a minute to see if she... Hi, all right? uh, sorry all right? I'm late. Are you all right? Although Wayne isn't the baby's father, he and Louise want to be assessed as a couple. Yeah. Me picking this up now where I have, I'm quite worried about where you are in your abstinence, really. I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, because from what you were like is amazing where you are now. Yeah. But I need some form of plan that you're doing for detox or rehab. Because we're in care proceedings, there will be an expectation for <coughs> that. They're not going to just turn around because you um, go to contact and it's, it's going well, that they will let you have your baby back. I don't see why I should... Because the risk would be so be high. Total, yeah. I know people that's got their children and they're still on methadone. Yeah. But th th we're in court with this, so the, the baby's <clears> been removed because of the chaotic drug use, the history of it. Yeah. You have to evidence yeah. that you, you have changed. You know, your lifestyle. Yeah, well, obviously we have changed. Yeah, and in I'm, a big I'm, way. I've made that clear that I want you to know that, <coughs> and I don't want to take that away from you. But to be honest with you, when I work with families, yeah. I would have an expectation of that, plus I would want to see evidence of you living in the community as well, drug free for a while. Why well, wouldn't none of this make sense? It's not too late. It's not too late. It's too late. I'm not even going to get her back. No, I'm not going to get her back. I'm just yeah. trying to be honest no, with you. No, I'm not going to get her back. No, Everything it's not that. Everything she's done too late is like, what we're doing now is not good enough. Well, I got you wait, so I'm abstinent it. to get my child back. Yeah. What what you frightened of that you feel you wouldn't be able to do that, or is just no, not in time. Costs. I want my baby back as a baby, Louise. I yeah, didn't want okay. her back when she's like two. Right. Uh, everything's been done too late. Yeah. No, it's not because if you go and have detox, which is what two weeks, say, and you're doing really well, we could look at a mother and baby unit. So she will be with you. You will be in a unit, and it won't be home as such, but she will be with you. 
We ain't gonna get her back. No, That's no, that is not true. Now, that right? is not true. Of course you will. It's not true. Of course you will. If die. I can see you, you know, moving forward and and stuff like that, I will fight for you. I I will. We are. But at the moment, I it. I can't I can't. If someone said to me now, I have to do a recommendation. I can't recommend it because I need to see more. A major decision is going to be made of oh, whether this little that. baby comes back to you guys is massive. Yeah, I appreciate Because we that. don't remove children, you know, no, like yeah, people think we do. I know. We've just been doing what we thought was what we had to do. Obviously, mm. you've told us different. So mm. now we're saying, we, well, 100%, I'll do whatever it takes. But we've got to get it right. We have got to make sure that it is the right decision for her. OK. Yeah. All right, then. All right, then, Louise. Oh. Right. So I'll see you Tuesday, anyway. Right, right. Oh, yeah. oh. I have an expectation as a social worker of what I would expect a parent to do at this level, where we're thinking of returning a child to their care. So it's part of me, really, and how I want things to be. But I, I think you must offer parents every opportunity they can when we're in this level, of, you know, like care proceedings, because then they have that opportunity, they have the choices. Child protection is if a child is at risk of or is suffering significant harm. The standard categories we deal with are neglect, of physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, and emotional abuse. I've always had a sense of objecting to any abuse of power, you know, whatever that is, whether it's a dictator or someone who's abusing their kid. Yeah. You know, you think you see everything, but humanity has endless <laughs> ways to surprise you. Ben has just received a new and urgent case. A health visitor has reported fears that a 14-month-old baby is being sexually abused. The mother is living with a known sex offender, despite a police warning. The police are saying he's high risk, yeah. and I would agree. Yeah. So I suppose our starting point is that it, it is, we're not going to be able to agree for this baby to still live with mum if this man is in the home. I'll see you later, James. Yeah, all right. It's, it's all about managing risk and assessing risk. And that's what we do. Coming up with safe plans to limit the risk or, you know, eradicate the risk. We're going to meet the police there because, as a social worker, I can't remove a child. I don't have any legal powers to do that. So we may require the police to um, take out a police protection order. We will talk to Mum. If Mum's cooperative and can work with us, then we won't need to remove the child. So it all depends on Mum's reaction at this point. The mother's boyfriend has a history of sex offences going back 30 years. Are you Yeah. Are you? Is, is that what we're knowing you by today? Yeah, that is my name. I'm just waiting for my colleague from the police to okay. arrive, um, DC Moore. I haven't done anything wrong. I think you know DC Moore, don't you? I don't know. Right. I think he's possibly interviewed you about different things over the past year. Yeah. Yeah, or last, during last year. I was on bail, went to the cop shop, and it was NFA, no further action because I was proved innocent. Yeah. So, I think... And I didn't even have to go to court for that. I think there's a distinction between not having enough ed evidence and being proved innocent. What we'll do, we'll explore with Mum. You know, we'll, we can either get her somewhere safe or she's got family to go to. We'll talk to her about all of that. I think what we can't do is just walk away from her leaving it as it is. I've you know, tried my best and I still get these social workers banging on my door. I've been under them since the age of two because my parents were violent and we was all taken off them anyway. So I've been brought up with social services all my life and I've got them again now. In the past, I've worked with them, not like when I was a teenager when I was always against them. 
because I will never forgive them for splitting me and my two brothers up. The mother refuses to be filmed. I left my son with him yesterday. We will get your son checked out by a paediatrician, all right, to make sure that he's OK. It's not a situation that is acceptable because we consider <laughs> to pose a very high risk to children. That's ben tries to reason with her for 40 minutes. Yeah, but you won't, we we're not going to leave you alone. You, you have to make a choice now, right? Are you going to work with us or do we have to go to the law and get a protection order for the baby? I won't let you take my son. You're either going to pack and come with us or we're going to have a load of police in here who are, we're going to remove your baby and take him into foster care. That's what will happen. Come on then, start getting some things together. No, I'm telling you to get out of my flat. OK. I think that's a decision. If you're not going to listen to us or we'll, we'll make a choice, we're going to have to PPO. So I think that's where we're going. Leave my baby. I'll speak to you later. <laughs> that's a little bit unconventional, but can one of you perhaps come with me? So can I go up now or not? Um, I wouldn't at the minute. She, she couldn't. She couldn't accept that, you know, she had to leave and, um, you know, she couldn't accept any of the choices, so it became a bit um, emotional. So we just had to take the baby, you know, sometimes we've got no choice. She'd been drinking, it just became increasingly clear she wasn't going to be able to um, you know, make an informed decision and, you know, do the right thing. So, you know, this is one of those instances where, you know, we have to do an extremely difficult thing. James, I tried ringing. Got a little visitor. Hello. This has been... Have they just peeped in? Where's Mum? Um, back at the flat, being restrained. And Ben, you offered, you offered, and Mum knew we would B and B her. We'd find her somewhere else in the interim. James, she's yeah, so saying I'm not going where there's blacks and packers. She's just not. She, we couldn't get through to her. Although she accepted the risk mm. from him, and is even worried he might have done something to him. Was she, was she, was she unhappy about the child being removed? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like she, no, yeah. no, no to everything. Right. But okay. accepts the risk, and you know, there's no getting through to her. Ultimately, okay. we just had to pick him up and leave, and the police dealt with the yeah. whatever it is, the aftermath. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. We've got the baby in the office now. The police. Wow. That's that's quick as it can be. Thank you very much for that. We've got a placement. Fabulous. Yeah. And as long as she knows she's coming with nothing. I just, this yeah. is it. Well, we'll see what we've got. Mmm. <sighs> this baby's now subject to a PPO, which means that the baby can stay in our care for 72 hours. And because we don't have a place for the baby to stay in terms of a family member, and because, unfortunately, mother's not safe at the moment, and we're going to have to place the baby in foster care, and our fostering team has found a placement for us. Hi, Poppet. Hi. See you all. I'm trying to remember the last time we went and came back with a baby. I think it was about three years ago, and the baby went home 24 hours later. So it happens very rarely, like this. It happens, they, they, some, you know, it can happen in a planned way when we're fully assessed, but actually to go out with the police and for the police to remove is very unusual. Yeah. It's a little song, is it? Yeah. If I was to pick one thing that gives me the most satisfaction, it is getting in the way of a paedophile who's honing in on a child. Opportunity to stop that happening makes it all worthwhile. That's good. That's very good. Hayley, Ben, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you got a few. Yeah. We don't know much about the family. We've been in today. It's, it's the first time we've been in, and we've come away with him. So it's it's kind of gone from zero to a hundred in in space of a few hours. Yeah. Things don't often happen quite like that, thankfully. A bit more planned, yeah, a bit more planned. That's your concern, but yeah. you wouldn't mind if it was... I know you did, and, and you know, there's nothing in white... One month on, and Louise is concerned Mercedes' mother still isn't reducing her methadone. She and her team manager meet the council's solicitor. I've been speaking directly to Ryan Lewis, Louise's drug worker. Yeah. He's now given her a plan that she has to turn things round in the next four weeks, where she has to attend all appointments offered to her, produce urines every time, and he will review that after four weeks, and if she's managed to do that, he will then look at further assessing her as into going into detox. And if she doesn't? If she doesn't, he will just refer her to her GP where she will continue on the methadone level, whatever she is. Mercedes was born on the back of a history of drug entrenched, use. Entrenched, entrenched drug yeah. use. Previous child removed. And we timetabled through because we think that this is a case that can be dealt with relatively quickly because ultimately it, it, it turns on can parents make a change and there's nothing that, that you're describing to me now or that is really in their statements yeah. that suggests that they can. How is your assessment going to change between now and the 25th of February? Well, in, in January, February, you're going to have two people saying they're going into detox, so they're producing you a plan where they're going to detox evidence. If they're doing it? If, yeah, okay. but there, it's a big if, if they do. Well, yeah. there's if nothing... They, if they do, then that means that the courts okay. are going to be requesting timescales well, to allow that. they're going to be requesting yeah. a timescale. Yeah. Yeah. But if they are providing negative samples to... Which they have done. Well... Yeah. When have they provided negative samples? I'm doing this just by memory. The 15th to the 11th, I'm sure there was a negative for Louise. And that relapse... So we've the got 20th, one negative. Two, but it's still a negative, you know, and it's so... Yeah, yeah. That's not going to... That's not going to wash it with I'm the not, cop. Oliver, yeah. I'm not arguing with you, and I'm not saying to you that they're doing so fantastic and I'm trying to fight their battle. They're not doing well. They're really high risk. OK, well, I think... My concern I'm... is that I, I think we're just running too fast with this and I think they've got to have a reasonable time scale for this baby to have every chance they can to turn this around. If they can't, then fair enough, I'm quite happy to go into court and say that. OK. Well, in that case, I think if at some point we think, well, hang on a minute, they do appear to be turning it round, then let's look at it again. What's that? It's massive for someone. I'm always aware of that. You know, we're, we're asking an awful lot life-changing you know this is big stakes big big stakes for this family the baby's future will be decided in court to help make the decision the court appoints a guardian for the child Sarah's priority is to determine the baby's future as quickly as possible the child deserves a chance to be brought up within their family, if at all possible. But you have to balance that against the developmental needs of a very young child. We did used to think the babies were quite portable, and it didn't, as long as their needs were met, it didn't matter too much who was, who was meeting those needs. Um, and I think now there's much more research about how vitally important it is, particularly for brain development, for them to establish good, solid, predictable attachments. And if babies don't develop those attachment skills, that obviously affects all their relationships into their future. Well, I want to be very clear with Louise, as I have been before, exactly the things that worry me um, about, about her and Wayne's ability to safely parent. And I think, it, you know, it's only fair to be very clear about what the, the difficulties are, even though, you know, you can't sugarcoat it, really. 
that's always has to be balanced by the fact that she's a very vulnerable young woman. These are very difficult, emotionally distressing areas of conversation. I'm not happy about any of the options, really. I want her, really. But if it was a case where it come to that I couldn't have her full time, I would ask for it to go to court for my mum to have, as long as there was set in stone that I could see her on, re on a regular basis, as long as I was doing well. And you are doing really well. What that has to be balanced with is how long she can wait. And that's what my, uh, the focus of my job is, and obviously to look at all the alternatives. If she can't come to me, I don't want her in care. No. Like, you know, being no. adopted out. No, no, no. I mean, if we possibly can, you know, she needs yeah. to be within her family, doesn't she? I mean, the difficulty is that, you know, the time to yeah. go yeah. through your recovery with yeah. its ups and downs, yeah. um, you know, is much longer than the yeah. timelines for a little baby. Well, I'll tell you what, the best thing to do is bring her around here tomorrow and we'll have her here from tomorrow. Sweet. Done. <laughs> We're loving Karen, you know. I, you know, I've got to cut the pictures to put on the wall, cut the things to sort out, but, you know, I'm getting there. I yeah. don't feel like I'm really back there for some reason. Well, I think, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, the court will make that decision. Because and it, but it recovery needs all the is a long road. It's, it it's is just a, for life. It is a it? very, very long road. Also, the professionals have to be absolutely sure, because the worst thing of the lot, wouldn't it be, is, OK, the court says, you know, you deserve a chance and things go badly wrong, mm. and she has to be moved again. That's yeah. why, I mean, I know it's, it feels like you've got massive hopes to, to jump through, and you have. Come and I'm being very straight now. with you about what those are, Come but that's along. the reason, because... We can't take those kind of risks yeah, with right. her. Yeah. Might be. Listen, we'll get it back. Of course you will. Do you know what I mean? That's what we want. It's, it's, I think it will help us, you know? But that's not Mercedes' job to help oh, you. No, 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 I don't mean that, but it will... It, 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 it's, it's just what we want, you but know? she should be with her mum now. She should. I mean, she here's should. the best one. And if it's possible, if it's possible, because it is about her. She's, she's an innocent little baby, isn't she? Yeah. She didn't ask for this. No. Louise has four weeks to prove she's serious about quitting drugs. I'm just taking and reducing all my meth things. I was on 75 mil and I'm on 45 now. So I need to be down to at least 30 mil to go into detox. You know, I just want to be in my own little house, not having to move again and stuff like that. I'd like to be settled down in a relationship with Wayne. Just live the normalest life possible with my children. Gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Ah! Where's your eyes? The baby boy Ben removed is doing well in foster care. Who's this? Oh. The elephant. Give him cuddle. Give him cuddles. Ah. Oh. A lot of these children um, yeah. don't have secure and good attachments. And our first role is getting that attachment going. It needs to be a relaxed atmosphere, oh, it needs to be very that. calm. A lot of time spent for the child to trust you. It shows then that they can actually go on and attach to other people. <whistles> he does get very, very upset when he has a nappy changing and when you dress him. So we obviously let his social worker know that that's a little bit of an issue with him. How is he doing? He's great. He's been absolutely contented and smiley and, you know, a dream. She's... She's, you know, really chuffed. <laughs> Think she wants to keep him. <laughs> Ben's biggest concern is the baby might have been sexually abused. So he's been examined by a paediatrician. We did a kind of formal developmental assessment and 
it, it was great. Mm -hmm. There's just a couple of things that concerned us slightly. Okay. Socially, he was a bit unusually accepting of strangers. Yeah, For example, he that. put his arm up to Russell, immediately wants to go and cuddle. Yeah. The fact that he was absolutely fine in your office, yeah. the, fa the fact that he settled into the foster carers so quickly. Yeah. It's just slightly unusual for a 14-month-old. Sure. And okay. the physical examination, no signs of anything no, untoward nothing, happening? Nothing. Of, I mean, Russell did most of it, but okay, nothing brilliant. of concern. Brilliant. Really. Well, that's good okay. news. Well, thankfully, there was no physical signs of sexual abuse, but it doesn't mean nothing's happened. What we know about this bloke is he had plenty of opportunities to sexually abuse this child, and disturbingly, he took major responsibility for changing nappies. Why would you do that if you were, uh, you know, it's not your child? You know, mum's willing to do it, so that's slightly disturbing, but. Perhaps we'll never know. Chat, chat, chat. Children are only removed immediately in the most extreme high risk situations. That's. A new case of severe neglect has been referred to Ellen. And is that the master bedroom? I'm yeah. 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 She is concerned a seven year old child is living in these conditions. Yeah, because that is obviously human feces in the bath. Yeah. Because they spent a lot of money on these okay. blocks. They spent a lot of money on these blocks. Ellen has already met the child at school and now takes a housing officer to see the mother. It was about direct work with families. That was what really drew me to a career in social work. Sadly, that's not really what we're able to do these days, just due to sheer demand on our time. Oh, hi there. It's with the council. We've got an appointment for you today. All right, we need you to come in. I'll come down and speak to you one minute. Thank As you social much. workers, we've got a huge barrier to get over when we very first meet families but our aim is to keep families together. Okay. Where are we going then? Where are we going first? When was the last time you were in here? Where's your lounge? Come on then, let's go, let's go. Okay. I'm Ellen, I'm the one that wrote you the letter. I had a referral um, from the housing department Obviously, they were concerned about the living conditions of the flat, and so then the referral was made to me. So, no, it's OK. Listen. The mother agrees to continue filming as long as she isn't identified. <laughs> so we're here to, to help you. Come on. No, 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 no. Obviously, you need some help and some support, and that's what we're here to do. The housing department told me that the toilet's not working and that it's blocked and that, you know, so you need to use the, the bath, you know, and, and that's sort of, that can be repaired. We can get that sorted today. I don't want someone to stay with her. Which you'll be, this is your home. No, I don't want this one. Is, this is, is there problems? Home. Is there problems here? Are you? Because I can't. It's everything, everything. I mean, at the moment, it's not in a good state, is it? And we need to sort it out. And Crystal and I can help you get a move if that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, you want my daughter. No, no, no. We want to help you so that so that you've got, got a nice home. To stay. <laughs> can I show us down there? I think, you know, this is on the list to do. I mean, there's nothing that I can see that I can do straight away to help you with this, because I think, I mean, in terms of, it's just, it's just a good clean, isn't it? It's not working, is it? Can you open that? Okay. Yeah. So I'll call repairs on that. The water comes out of the bucket, okay. So the bath is blocked, is it? Uh, someone said, um, they were going to phone domestic somewhere. Domestic drains. They never come out. Okay. I can do it. 
Then I wanted to move. And then I got told I couldn't move. This is what your room would be at. Yeah, but it's got loads of pack clues and stuff like that. So, so how long have you not been staying here? Over a year. So you've sort of been sofa hopping for a year then, really? Do you drink at all? I did used to, and now I don't. That's why I got in trouble with the police. Is that when you were found drunk in the park, I think, wasn't it, quite a I while ago? Because, obviously, we were notified, but I think we didn't have to follow that up because your mum agreed to go and pick your child up from school and kept her overnight. Yeah, that's when it all went wrong. So, are you all right with me coming round on Monday? And we'll make a start on it together. Because mm. I think, you know, it's got to a point where you're sort of uh, just drowning in it, aren't you, a little bit, and it's, it's all got too much. So, things can only move forward now. <coughs> That is the role of a social worker, to engage with families. It's actually about being able to demonstrate to families that actually we want to work with them. We don't want to dictate, but all the time it's about risk assessing the household. Is this child at risk? If so, who from, what from? And are we able to put in um, a safety plan to reduce those risks or do we need to remove the child? Ellen gives the mother two weeks to clean up, while the daughter stays with her aunt. The long-term future of the child remains in doubt. Wayne has tested positive for crack and been recalled to prison to serve the last two weeks of a sentence for burglary. I'm the main carer that is there for her, so I'm hoping it won't put that much of a big dent in. Maybe, like, they might say he has to work a bit harder, I don't know, but they have told me that I'm the one that they're looking at more. Oh, this is a joke, man. There he is, look. <laughs> I think maybe it was just getting a bit on top of him, everything just a bit too much. You know, going through courts and stuff like that, so... Why is that a your car? I knew you would have, you know. Let's get In there. Let's get started. Come on, then. Yeah. Why is that your car? Why is that your car? I don't like it. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. What? We had my jeans are ripped, so I've got... Yeah, I've got jeans in there, yeah. What? Them jeans are too tight now. He thinks he could just come off of the crack and the heroin and he could still have a drink. He can go out partying and take pills and snort coke. Like, on a weekend, that's fine. <laughs> he thinks that's all, all all right. He's not in this world of abstinence. But I've got a time limit on mine. Which is a lot different, but you know. Cheers. Thank you. Wasn't really worried about me coming on a visit, was you, lad? I've pulled through. What's pulled through? Just been in the gym for a while. You've been in the gym. Mm. <sighs> but I think you're put into a category like if if you're on drugs. You're going to be a bad parent. I think that's it's, it's wrong. It's not. It's not true at all. So I know plenty of good parents. So yeah. Knowing children need a settled and secure home in which to thrive, Ellen returns to see if the mother has started the clean up. It's no good me just going in and, and you know taking over because that's not what it's about. Because if she doesn't take ownership for it now, the likelihood is we will have a repeat of this in another 12, 18 months' time. I think there's no sign of her at the moment, which is really disappointing. However, what looks really positive is that when I've just looked through the letterbox now, um, there's lots of black bags by the door. Um, and actually, I can do some of these. Hey, I thought you went in. Yeah, I'm going to go out and 
get some more things. Have you? you are we getting on? Can I have a look? I'm just looking like that one. Let's have a look. Okay, but do you think, realistically, that this is going to be ready by Friday? I'm going to do it. I mean, to, what am I also going to do if I'm sitting there? So, what's the plan of action for the rest of today? Just clear both rooms, clean them, and then go on to that one, and then chuck everything out of the cupboard in that one. I think she does have enough understanding to be able to acknowledge that actually if she doesn't make the changes, then her daughter is not going to be returned to her care immediately. Louise is reducing her methadone, but she too has tested positive for other drugs. Seven weeks after being told she needs to be clean, Louise finally accepts she's not ready to take Mercedes home. She clearly said to me she's thought about things. She knows that she's not going to be able to achieve what's necessary within the timescales. She don't know how many months it will take her to recover. What she said to me was that she was going to continue to be abstinent for herself and so she could have a relationship with Mercedes. But she wanted her mum to have care of her. She said she's thought about it and her mind would not change. And that is exactly what she said to me in right. early January. Mm. That because she loves Mercedes so that much, is she why wants she wants the, to do it. The yeah. very best for her. She don't want her left because she knows she's not going to achieve it within, you know, yes. the next months or whatever. Mm. I think it's fair to say that on the basis of what we've got, we will not be recommending a rehabilitation to the care of mum um, alone or mother with Wayne. Agree with that, Louise? Yes, I do. You know, there was an expectation that she needed to achieve, really, by January. She knows she's not done that. She's admitted she has been tested positive. And, you know, I really admire her for doing that. And I don't think she realises, actually, what amazing thing she's done for the sake of the baby, really, in that one. Oh, there she goes! Oh, there she is! Look at you! I'm not giving up. I still... Be doing what I can, it's just that I don't think I stand that much of a chance of succeeding to get her back in, in the time scale of things that I've got to do. Hopefully, soon she'll be settled down with my mum and her sister. <laughs> little princess! Is she my little princess? Oh, yeah, 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 you wait till you see your sister. She's going to love you. That's what she said to me. Hey, so so Whatever will be. Bye-bye, sweetheart. Mummy, see you Monday. Bye. Bye now. Bye, sweetheart. Bye-bye. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. What Bye, will be, will be. Bye, sweetheart. When I grew up and fell in love, I asked my sweetheart what lies ahead. Will we have rainbows day after day? Chuck 
because we're stuck here. Our big renovators. Um, I stopped talking to my dad for just over a year, like a year and a half. And it was just isolation, really. I just isolated myself from everybody and just drank. Friday to Sunday would be just a massive binge. Do like 18 litres of cider. That's why well, I went yellow. Imagine that. What's that, like six litres a day? I found I got sacked and then I just come straight back here, grab a bottle of bullet, uh, Jack Daniels and Seven Comfort. I just drank the Seven Comfort and the Jack Daniels and passed out in a park. And um, I think that's when social services was called once. That's how Ellen knew before I told her. But I was all sober when I see her. Gotta get things sorted. She wants a purple carpet. I think probably the key to all of this is gonna be going back quite a long time and all these emotional problems have been escalating and, and now they've got to crisis point. A month on, Louise is struggling to come to terms with not getting her daughter back. We we're obviously looking at her having a part in the baby's life so the baby can associate with her and know who she is. But that is what we're asking, you know, for another person to be the main carer. And that's very hard for a mother to, to have to understand. Yeah. Now, going back, you, Louise, said that you've really thought about this and that you were aware that although you would love to keep Mercedes yourself, you, were, you know that you were not in the place to do it at this time. Yeah, at this And therefore, time, not... you wanted to put your mum forward. Therefore, you're doing this for yourself so that you can have involvement in her life. Yeah. Yeah. I would like shared responsibility, yeah. not oh she's at my mum, she's fine, and I get one day a week contact. What's that? Yeah. That's 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 if you like that that offer is in a sense of what is guaranteed. That's not to say that it stays at that, because as I just said to you, if things are going really well, then there's no to say that that don't increase. One day but, a week, that's less than what I get now. Well, to be honest with you, in most situations like this, we would recommend five times a year. What? Yeah. So this is exceptionally high, and the reason why I'm supporting that level is because you both have been really good. So what about And me? committed. It's meant to be better and easier when they're kept in the family. How is that, where you get one contact Because if she was adopted, you wouldn't see her. Well, maybe that would be better. Well, I don't agree with that, because you do want to be uh, part of her possibly, life, don't you? Possibly. I can't give you what you want, honey, can I? Would I you? can't give it to you, because you're not in the right place to do that. You're in a good place. It's heartbreaker. Yeah. You know, we're trying so hard. How far she's come in the last eight months is unbelievable. I know, and I, I've told you, I will not take that away from you. But it's so not enough, groups. unfortunately. I know. I mean, I... I, I just, Oh. Uh, I can't All right, that's OK. Anymore. The local authority, which is me, is telling you what we will be recommending. Your solicitor is the one who will fight for you about that. So when you do see her, it's the one you need to be telling her that you're not happy with what I'm suggesting it once a week, and she will go in court and fight for more. I, no, I know I could re recommend someone seeing their child once a week, myself. We have to look at it in the long-term thing. For a child to be able to settle in a placement, it would be really disruptive for you to be going in and out loads and loads of times. That child would be really confused. But that's the only option I've got for her going to my mum's. No, you, you had another option but you haven't been able to manage that, and very bravely you've admitted that, which I will say a lot of mums are unable to do that, but you have, so you did have another option. Oh. Right then. That was very, very difficult. Um, 
I just feel very, very sad at the moment, really, with it all. Both of them are not in the right place to hear these sort of messages, really, because they can't see where they are in their drug use or recovery. And it's just very, very difficult to say that to a man, really. So it's just a part of social work I don't really enjoy. But there you go, it has to be said, because, like I said just now, it's, you know, that is my job. I am the social worker to the child. Ellen is aware the cleanup is just the beginning. The mother must now work towards providing a real home before her daughter can move back in. to us sparked a whole triage of, of professionals, really. We're brought in to support and actually empower you and put you back on the right track. The other thing would be around developing a home for the both of you. Now we're looking at the longer-term stuff and how she can maintain where she is now without our intervention. Hello. How are you? Okay. If you've got some money and your gas is paid off, you can keep it a bit warmer in here, can't you? Right, so if you can roughly write down for me all coming in and going out. Yeah. A child needs a home. It's about her having a base. Um, and it's about them, as a family unit, having a base. The baby Ben removed continues to thrive with his foster carers. The long-term hope is that he'll be reunited with his mother, but only if she proves she can keep him safe. To see the difference from the day that he arrived till today has been brilliant. The development-wise, he's come on leaps and bounds, his speech and language is coming along, he's interacting, he's playing. Um, yeah, we're really enjoying having him and I think he's enjoying being here. And he's tending to walk a little bit more. Yes, you are. Yeah, when we have a success, that's never out there splattered across the papers is it social services save a child you've never seen that headline so what we do is largely invisible and it only becomes visible when something goes wrong and you know social workers are vilified good afternoon duty team debbie speaking you know your baby p died and sharon shoesmith the head of haringey children's services was summarily sacked sacked no investigation has sat when the police shot john charles menendez in the head um, seven times, an innocent Brazilian, um, you know, obviously tragic, you know, mistake, but a failing on their part. You know, the police closed ranks, the politicians closed ranks around the police, and you get a sense that, OK, you know, they are well protected by the state. That if something goes wrong with social work, then, you know, bang, you're out, you're scapegoated, and you're splattered across the papers as, you know, some sort of incompetent do-gooder. So, you know, we do feel exposed and out on a limb. We know if it goes wrong, we're going to get it in the head. <laughs> Baby Mercedes is now eight months old. After weeks of getting to know her grandmother at contact sessions, she's on the way to her new home.
special day. Louise is also moving on, setting up a new home with Wayne, but without her baby, the second child she's lost to her addiction. Obviously, I'd love to have her, but at this time, um, it wouldn't be right to have her, really. I do have slips on the crack. That's my downfall. I've got a lot out there to fight for and to be strong for. Hello, you're coming in. Hello, Um, She's talking to me. Louise, as a baby, four and a half months is your mummy. This is Louise. That's mummy. That's in 2007. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I should give it back to you then for the next 18 years. Plus, <laughs> it is, isn't it, honey bun? We don't mind, do we? All right. Take care. And you. I think it's very powerful, John. Sometimes I do think to myself, who are you to make that decision? Who are you, you know, to do it? And I have to really think about that. And as long as I feel that it's right for that child, then that's what I do. To find out more about the daily lives of social workers, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash protecting our children and follow the links to the Open University. For details of organisations which offer advice and support, go online to bbc.co.uk slash action line or call the BBC Action Line to hear recorded information on 08000 560 Lines are open 24 hours and are free from a landline. Mobile operators will charge. <laughs>